Okay, so next one. We are very excited. Oh, yes, this one. So it, this one seems like not a big deal. Like, oh, whatever. What is this? <laughs> a Ziploc bag, right? Like, it seems like, ah, oh, what a big, uh, no big deal. Ziploc bags, who cares? No, Ziploc bags for compartmentalizing is very, very important. We often feel overwhelmed when we have so many things going on at exactly the same time. How do we manage like our kids and how do we manage work? And we've got all of these things compartmentalizing to say, you know what? I don't need to deal with everything right now. I'm going to take some of these items and then I'm going to put them into, into this compartment, right? Let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna take my food, right? I'm gonna deal with food when I get to food, and I'm just gonna compartmentalize that. Being able to figure out what is the one thing. Uh, I've been where, reading Gary Keller's The One Thing, and I feel that a lot of business practices where they they know there what is the one thing that you can do that is going to give you the most benefit. It's gonna make everything else that you do easier. I think being able to identify a focus and priority is super important. Otherwise, you're just going to get overwhelmed. There's going to be too many things. And so I do think, you know, compartmentalizing. And so this is what I did in my backpack. I would have one for just the food when I need to pull it out. I would have another compartment for maybe electronics, like my phone, if I needed to pull that out. One for my keys, maybe. And I would have them in different pockets. And everything was secured. So if water spilt on me, only one compartment would get water on it. And that is really, really important because I don't want the entire system just falling and failing because of one, uh, one bit of water in that one area. And so compartmentalizing, um, it's a way of thinking. It's more a, I would say, like a, a business practice that we have, um, kind of like divide and conquer but I would say there's this prioritization, like you know what you're focused on, that, that element of focus um, is something that is also very much needed uh, as well. Okay, <laughs> so next one up we have, what's this? Uh, are you familiar with these things? It's a baler, okay? And so one of the biggest risks in a small uh, boat or like an inflatable, is water intake. You have a lot of wind, like today, it's a little bit windy, uh, above 30 kilometers per hour, and you could get like waves straight up into your into your boat, and you're gonna need to bail out some water, right? And so um, I'll just start with this one first. I'll, I will show you uh, the rope afterwards, and I'll show you some of the other components that I have. But let's just talk about just the baler right now, just being able to scoop things up. One of the biggest, like, in the same way, I think it's really important for us to maintain kids' health in the same way. And this is one of the reasons uh, why the testing, uh, tracing, and isolation has been so important for our kids is because what it means is that you can quickly go in and you can bail out. You know, like, you can, you can say, like, all right, you know, if we have an incident of somebody who's really sick, we can isolate them, right? And I've, I've heard from other parents as well that this is very important for them. They need a way to go, okay, if you're sick, you stay at home. Um, that way we ensure that like, hey, we're not getting a bunch of water into our, into the school. And so it's a, it's a courtesy. Um, it is not just a courtesy, but it's a practice that I think is going to help us a lot. And giving, it's about giving choices, and so um, I was speaking with a friend the other day. They said, like, oh, yeah, there are some parents who um, don't want their kids to wear masks anymore. And there are some um, parents who, like, don't want to, they can choose to not vaccinate their children. And those are great. Uh, I think in the same way, some parents also want the ability to choose to have more safety precautions for their kids. So, for example, they want to be able to choose to to get like their kids vaccinated. And, and that may be one of the, the key things to help protect our kids more in the future. And so I want to give those types of options 
for our children is options that allow them to be more safe and options that allow them to, um, to choose, to have those choices. So if we're going to have choices to, to say to not vaccinate, we should also have choices to have more safety precautions. And so this is, this is what it's about. It's about uh, that voice and choice, giving people options uh, in both directions, not just one. And so it's, it's often one or the other, uh, but I feel like you'll get more when, when we can support everyone. Okay, we're back. We're back to the rope with the buoy. So do you see that? So this is the buoy po uh, portion, and this is, is, this is the rope. So we got the way it works is you just unravel uh, the rope, you unravel the rope, and you throw, you throw the buoy towards that person so that they can catch it. Here's something um, with this rope with buoy. So having a way that you can reach those who are nearby is so important because we can't help others if we need to jump into the water in order to save them, right? Just think about it. Like if you had your own life jacket on, right? You had your own life jacket on and you're swimming and you're, you're barely trying to breathe. There's no way that you're going to go and save somebody. You got to be in the boat. You got to be in the boat to save somebody else. And this is one of the things that I, I ask is, what is our state, right? Are we in the boat? Are we feeling okay? as parents, and this is something that I, I advocated a lot for as well. I said, yes, teacher wellness is important, but what about parent wellness, right? Because parents have moved from being supporters of their kids' education to partners in their kids' education. So our kids can't be well if the parents are not well, right? And so what kind of support, what kind of training, what kind of like tools are, are being given to you as a parent, what, what kind of training did you receive for, oh, these are like ways that we can keep you safe? There's a lot that we can do. And there's a lot of things that we can do to make it really easy. We can make videos, we can make short snippets. You know, something I love is, is those really like the 60 second, here's a 60 second tip for parents, gives you a bunch of things that you could try. Give it a try this week, see how it works for you. Um, these are ones that are tested and, and we know from the research that they work. Give it a try. Here's something that is, that is a useful tip for you as, an, as a parent. Like I feel for a lot of parents, it's like we're all in our own boats, right? Like if anything, I've, I've, I've heard from parents this feeling of isolation. I feel isolated from other people. That's a problem. That is a really really big problem. What are we doing to keep our, keep things safe? This is the key, is as we need those types of supports, we need to be able to throw things, but we need to be in the right kind of condition. I've already talked about wellness, but wellness to me is such a big thing that I feel like I need to have multiple points to talk about this. Health and wellness, you don't have those things you can forget about helping other people, you can, for, like, don't worry about any of those things. If you are not well um, from a health perspective, or if you are not well from a mental health perspective, forget about helping other people. You, you are the persons who, like, we need to provide support for you. So what kind of buoy do we make available to parents? That's something that we need to, to prioritize and we need to consider. All right, cool. So let's go back. Um, what's the next one? Oh yes, whistle. <laughs> so I gotta, you guys love this. Okay, my kids like I had to put this away because my kids love the whistle so much. But you, you, you're familiar with the the colored the colored whistles, right? Like these ones. This is a flat, low profile one. <whistles> Very loud, right? So it, it's it's extremely loud. It'll get other people's attention, and sometimes we do need to sound the alarm, right? And we need to let others know that we're, we're struggling or that we need help. Um, and that can be at an individual level, that can be at a student level, that can be at a administration or even a school district level. But we need to have those kind of easy ways of having those connections. And one thing I've loved with Calgary Catholic is that they have a really good support. They always have a, 
uh, like a counselor who is on board, who can, who can help individuals. But it's those individuals that are sounding the alarm. And guess what? People are sounding the alarm in different ways. They used to use only one way, right? They would call maybe a kid's helpline, right? They make a phone call and they say, yeah, I'm, I'm having, you know, I'm having mental health thoughts like about self-harm. That is how they would sound the alarm. But nowadays, guess what? Things have changed. Kids are no longer using, they're not using the, like a phone call and calling somebody up and talking to, no. They're using text messaging. They're using social media. They're using many other ways to sound the alarm. We have to be listening not only to the traditional channels, right, the traditional phone calls, but we also need to be listening to the other ways that they're communicating. Maybe they're saying it is um, through a text message. You know, I'm having these. Or maybe it's on a social media platform. Who's watching these? Who's listening in those spaces? Maybe it was on one of their recent TikToks. I don't know. But if we're not listening for these things, we're going to miss the signals. And if we're missing the signals, and, and this is the, the hardest thing, is like many parents have no idea what's going on. We are in these social media echo chambers, right, that are constantly giving us what they think we, we want, which can be good or bad for our mental health. Um, but these echo chambers can be very dangerous. And so people are sounding the alarm on these, but we're not seeing them. We're not seeing the signals. Do you know what to look for when it comes to your own children? Um, if something is not right with them, what could they be using? And so, <laughs> thank you, Ellis. Um, she just said, yes, TikTok. And so it, it's true, right? Like TikTok is becoming increasingly popular. And there are some parents on TikTok, like I, I'm on TikTok as well, uh, but there are some parents on TikTok who are, are talking about these things and some of the things that they're struggling through. And they're trying to make themselves more relatable. And I think this is really important. We need to recognize that we live in this world of social media. And if we're not on it, our kids are on it, and we have no idea what's going on. Like, how do we have those conversations? This, this relationship right? So it's not about the screen time. The way you go from screen time to quality is uh, quality time, I say, is you got to move beyond. You don't sedate, you relate, and then to, to ultimately create. And so how do you relate to their interests? You show interest in their interests. And how do you take that information and use it to help them go the next step? How, how do you help them with their goals? Because once you've built this kind of relationship, they're going to want to go with you more. They're going to trust you more. You're going to build this habit of speaking with your kids. They're going to be used to sounding the alarm with you, and they're going to want to listen to what advice you have. And so this isn't easy uh, for all parents. I know for, for some, um, this is, oh, it's like, what can we do? But this is important, okay? I have a, a pump. So what this is, is it like it plugs into, because it's an inflatable boat, right? And so if you plug in uh, this side into the, into the boat, and you, it's a foot pump, like you can, you can even hand pump it, you could fill up the boat. And one of the things that we've learned is that inequity has led to a even bigger gap between those who have had help at home and those who simply do not have help at home. And the key to bridging this gap is health and wellness, right? And so we got to make sure if we don't first focus on their health, we don't first focus on them being well from a mental health perspective, how can kids be successful? How can they, how can they move forward in their education to progress from where they are today? And so a lot of our efforts needs to be on this recovery, pumping them up, giving them the confidence that they can succeed. And for a lot of people, like for even my own son, I've, I've noticed that he'll say like, it's, oh, I, I hate school or I, I don't like this, but people get into these types of patterns and, and they are the ones that I think it's very helpful to 
think about patterns that can interrupt that. So you can ask about, oh, you say you hate school. So when, where do you hate school? What subjects do you hate school in? Um, when? When do you hate school? Is it always in the afternoons? Is it always in the mornings? Because these types of questions force your child to go from asking um, kind of the, their kind of the emotional responses to the thinking responses. And the thinking responses are the things that are going to get them into a different mode. They're going to be starting to think about solutions. You'll have a, a chance to encourage them, pump them up, and then they're ready to go. And so I think that that's a very important aspect is thinking about wellness. Health and wellness uh, is an essential part of any type of like getting back and thinking about, oh, okay, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to ensure that everyone gets through? It, it's very easy for me to help my own kids, but it's not easy for everyone. And that's one of the reasons why I felt like, yeah, running for a trustee position, it totally makes sense because I want to help people. Um, as much as possible, especially those who are struggling the most, because I was one of those students when I went to school. Things were not easy for me. Um, yeah, I talk a little bit about my own experience. Um, I'll, I'll share a little bit more of that story in a future time.